Hi, my name is Phil, I'd like to talk about politics. And as the UK looks ahead towards coming out of the lockdown, which isn't necessarily imminent, but it could be, we never really know with this government at the moment, the strategy is still unknown, but we are supposed to be finding what that is this week. Boris Johnson has said he's going to announce that this week. But it is inevitable to look at what South Korea did uh, in avoiding the real lockdown in the first place. And one of these was contact tracing using mobile phones. And the UK is gearing up to do this ourselves. But there are privacy concerns about the specific way we're doing it. But first, if you'd like to be notified of daily news and politics, then please subscribe to the channel and click the bell notification icon. So mobile app contact tracing works as follows. Uh, so as you go about your normal business, you've got your phone on you and your phone is interacting with phones of the people you come into close contact with. You've got this app installed. And if any of these people then become diagnosed with COVID-19, they update this on their app, and then notifications are sent out to all the phones of people who were in contact with them recently. It's anonymized data. You don't find out who that you've been in contact with has been diagnosed. You just know that someone has, so you can take appropriate action, which basically is go and get tested yourself. So you can go and make arrangements to get tested. And it is one of the ways in which the infection can be managed. It's part of wider measures, of course, on its own. It's not going to defeat this, but it is a measure that has to form part of the eventual solution. Now, there are two ways in which this form of contact tracing can be done. One is you have what is called the decentralized model as proposed by Apple and Google and adopted by quite a lot of countries. And this means that your phones do all the communicating between themselves. Or you can do what the British government would like to do and that you have the app report to a centralized database on government servers, which then handles the exchange of data. Now, as I say, a number of countries have opted for the first because of, amongst other things, privacy fears, but it's not just to do with that, but the UK and France wants the centralized model. There are some other countries that wanted the centralized model as well, but are sort of changing their mind. Now, the EU Commission has not expressed a preference. Uh, it says that the key priority is getting the solution implemented, getting this contact tracing in place. And that's right, in a way, absolutely. Um, it is one of the three things that we're going to need in order to really come out of lockdown without risking a second wave, with the other two really being covering our faces and social distancing, of course. But there are particular concerns in the UK especially. So Dominic Cummings is known to be a bit of a data fiend, and we know he worked on a campaign that used stolen personal data to misinform the general public during the Brexit campaign. He was also using the civil service, again, it's believed potentially illegally, once Boris Johnson became prime minister, to centralise a lot of government data for uses unknown, but we can't believe they're in our own interests. So the idea that you would implement this form of contact tracing using government servers when it isn't necessarily, um, you know, you don't necessarily have particular privacy concerns in a particular country, you still wouldn't necessarily want to do this. But in the UK, I think these privacy concerns are particularly heightened as a result of a complete lack of trust in those who would have access to the data and what they will also seek to use the data for. And it isn't even a more practical solution. You know, if it were a more practical solution and the only arguments against it were privacy concerns, it is possible to take the view, well, this is a real emergency now. Can we not just get through this, then review the situation and maybe, you know, put a bit of uh, scrutiny in there and perhaps get them to delete all that data and all the rest of it. Um, you know, there are there is one basic potential benefit to this centralized approach that makes it worthwhile. Um, but there are actually a lot of practical reasons not to do it. The decentralized version really is more practical because one issue is that the centralized version burns through mobile phone battery power much more quickly. Uh, the, the decentralized version, the app only really wakes up when it needs to, uh, as opposed to being on quite a lot. And it has been noted that this would dissuade people from using the app if it keeps draining the phone, you know, because the argument for the centralized model is that the, uh, the government and the agencies they're working with can have access to the data and then they can use it to refine the model. OK, potentially, that's a reasonable argument. But against the other two, I'd say the balance is in favor of the decentralized model. And most of the Western world agrees. Most countries are going for the decentralized model. I mean, just the battery life alone is compelling enough to me. 
people are simply not going to use this app if it keeps draining the power in their phone. Because remember, we're not talking about a situation now where you're only going out now and then. We're talking about a solution that's going to be with us for the longish term once the lockdown has been lifted. People are going to be out and about and need their phones. And if there's one thing that people in this country hate more than running down to their last 50 rolls of toilet paper, it's having their mobile phone run out of power. And you'd think the world was ending whenever this happens to people in my experience. Finally, it should be noted that Australia also released uh, an app of this form and they went along the centralized model lines but have had to concede that the power hungry nature of it is causing too many problems. Another thing to bear in mind, we've got two more things to bear in mind really to swing it in favor of decentralized form is the centralized version is susceptible to hacking and well also the decentralized form is being plugged by Apple and Google two massive tech giants. So any country that tries to come up with its own centralized model is having to work around that. You know, the arguments for the decentralized version, even without privacy concerns, far outweigh those for the centralized versions. It, it simply takes less time to develop. You'd be able to compare notes with lots of other countries because there's lots more countries using the decentralized model uh, for refining it. You have two massive tech giants working with you. It consumes way less power and it's not open to hacking, and you don't have the privacy issues as it's genuinely anonymous. But anyway, that is the situation. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Hope you found the video interesting. If you did, don't forget to click the like button, and if you'd like to support the channel further, then please also click the Patreon link for details. And until next time, I'll see you later.